It's been a long time since I've said it's time once again for the Real People Multi Game Solitaire Mega Tournament. Not that long, just uh, probably about a week or so. But I've been trying to um, film as frequently as possible because I am uh, soon to be having to move and I really want to get this game done beforehand. Uh, but I came down with a head cold and that uh, put me out of commission. I probably could have done it anyway, like I have before. I've, I've done lots of these um, episodes of 7 by 7 Ages without being completely well, um, or completely well rested, I guess. But this this one seemed important because we're at, we're just at the cusp, well, not just at the cusp, we just went through a big change. And so there's a lot to talk about and a lot to do. So, um... I guess the the important thing is is that it's been a while because I have I've already selected everyone's actions and I don't really remember what they were and I've probably forgotten some of the rules of the game too. <laughs> it's like if I don't do this every day I forget everything and then I have to like spend a lot of time reminding myself again. But that's okay. Um, so why what what's going on? What's going on? And we're down to three people and it's a pretty interesting situation. So we have. Um, Runt, who's in the lead, right? And I, don't, I really don't think there's any chance that anyone is going to catch her. And, you know, if I were playing this game, I think everyone would be thinking that way. Um, which doesn't mean she's going to win, however. It just means she's going to be in the final two. So here we have this inter interesting situation between Flush and Giraffe, um, who, uh, I, I guess Flush is, has a higher score, but um, he has... and. Yeah, actually, Flesh is kind of the fulcrum here that I'm thinking about. I'm just kind of getting my head back into the game as I'm talking. Um, Flesh has a couple of things going on with him. One is he's the one who controls the pace. He's furthest ahead on our progress track. Tied with, there's another blue marker here, but I don't know. That must have been one of Cowboys. Oh, no, that's printing. Okay. Um He's he's he pretty much gets to decide when the the next cutoff happens right now unless someone else catches up which could happen all someone would really need to do to catch up is start a new empire that doesn't have a a, a strong uh, setup modifier so there's some empires that have a setup modifier of zero so then they could start right where flesh is and then they could control um, the pace or have a little bit more say in it but he has he has that control uh, and he's he's ahead of giraffe in points. Now, what he does have, he, that's, not, that's not necessarily the best place to be in. It's good to be in control, but in a three-player game like this, it can, it can um, not be the best thing. And here is why. So, um, he has to have, uh, he has to make sure it cuts off when he has more points than Giraffe, right? But then at that point, he's going to have to compete directly with Runt for survival. So, not only does he want to... Um, he, he, he needs to make sure he has enough points for draft, but he wants to be in an advantageous p position uh, to compete with Runt at that point, uh, physically and maybe commercially as well, but more, mostly physically. Like, the end of the game is going to be pretty much military, I think, because it's, it's a last man standing scenario or woman standing scenario. So, um, so he's going to be having probably Runt beating at him as well, because Runt right now, she's just got to be thinking about getting in a strong position and making sure that maybe he's in a weak position or whoever is the second place person in terms of points is going to be weaker physically than her. So uh, enough talking about it. Let's see how, how it starts to play out. And when I came upon the markers, I found that Runt was planning to start an empire. And that empire told me a, and reminded me a bit of her intentions. So she started a modern state. That's one of those flexible empires um, where you can start them anywhere. It's not really specific to a geographic location like most empires. Uh, so she was, the, the rules for modern states, you can, you can start them anywhere that's already controlled by someone. It's basically a portion of that empire has become more like we are, correct? Or more like our uh, grandparents. Um, so she popped up right here, which is where Flesh's Portuguese are. Now, the modern state has another rule that if they are in a different continent, or a different region than the capital of the place, then you get to convert them. So she converted a couple of Flush's people, and then she bought some trucks. These are our first trucks in the game. So she's going to be giving Flush a little bit of a headache there. Interesting situation because there's also this um, confrontation here going on. Um, 
and that's going to be kind of fun for her, I think. One thing that's nice for Runt, I would really like to be in her position if I was playing this game. She doesn't have to worry about points, really. Uh, she can she can do things with points to kind of keep other people from getting points, but there's really no... I mean, she's uh, like a hundred more around, I'm estimating, points than anyone else. And she's set up to the point where she could be the one to, to, end, the, to end the game if she wants, or to, to move it to the next area. So... You know, not having to worry about points, she can really just let this be a thorn in uh, Flush's side, or maybe Giraffe's side as well. I mean, if we look at the map, Giraffe is actually more of a military problem than Flush currently. So if you look at the Japanese, they're still back in Era 2. Um, yeah, these guys, I forget, the Siamese, they're, they've been doing nothing the whole game. All he has is the Portuguese here. So really, best case scenario for her is Flush, flush wins, or Flush, flush survives, survives the elimination, getting rid of all of Giraffe's military forces, and then she shouldn't have too much of a problem getting rid of Flush, unless, you know, he changes things. So, she's got to hope to, I, I think Runt, it's, she's, she has the incentive to increase the pace right now, as long as Flush is scoring more than Giraffe. We've done production, and we're, we're partway through trade in progress. So far, production, we saw a big, well, not a big buildup. We just saw a buildup by the Portuguese. Uh, kind of a tough position for Flush here. He was planning to build up in preparation for uh, confronting or battling giraffe there, but uh, ended up having to build up around here. If you build up around a stack like this, it's kind of trouble because you might just be throwing those units away. But then if you don't build up, they can um, they can beat you even easier. <laughs> I don't know what I'm trying to say. Anyway, uh, more interesting thing that he did with this build up is he put down some submarines. We have our first submarines. Submarines, if you don't know, are way better than boats. Boats have to stay on the water, um, on top of the water, when really, like in the ocean, most of the great things that are happening are underneath the water, like down here. And submarines can go down there, which is why, if you look at some of my games, and I'm going on a little bit of a tangent here, um, I will play games that involve going under the water. There's two right there. Not ghost stories, but Nautilus. And this, uh, you can't see the top. Maybe you can see the top there. Can you see it? No, not really. Um, that's Search for Poseidon's Gold. Those are both games with submarines. There is a game right there, Regatta. That's a game with boats. I don't really play Regatta that much. I respect it as a game, but it's boats. And if you're going to be on the water, you want to go under the water. You don't want to be on the water. Anyway, so... Um, so he has some submarines, and he built them all up here. So you can you can think about what he might be planning to do on that. Uh, another interesting thing that happened was the Egyptians, the Pharaonic Egyptians, they completed a trade with the Portuguese. They had an advantage in the trade, but they lost due to um, poor die rolls. Smart move by Runt, I think. Clever move, because she kind of wins out either way. If they lose, you know, if they win the trade, well, they win the trade, and that's good for her Phrotic Egyptians. If they lose the trade, they win, because that makes the Portuguese go further along the track, and that's what happened. The Portuguese are here. We're, wow, they have aeroplanes now. Or they, they could get aeroplanes. They have the technology. They haven't produced any. Uh, so that's pushing the Portuguese further towards the end. And maybe this game will be something of a foregone conclusion. Though I want to be careful with saying that. I've been wrong so often in the past. Gone through most of the rest of the turn without incident. Um, well, there's been incidents, but nothing nothing huge or dramatic. Uh, but it's still noteworthy because of um, it's setting up for what is to come, presumably. Um, so the Germans and the Russians are both spreading out over Europe. There's going to be a competition there. Uh, you know, again, Runt's main motivation for spreading out over Europe is to keep the points away from the Russians because the Russians give points to Giraffe, and if Giraffe uh, loses out on points, then Runt presumably wins out on a, you know, having to have a having a better person to compete with, a, a more advantageous person to compete with. She'd rather um, beat up on Runt than have to face Giraffe, because Giraffe's got these, the Mongolians are getting stronger and stronger, In this turn they even got stronger still. They played a card which up, upgraded all of their cities, and the cities over here were already pretty good because um, because the Japanese had, had uh, put them in place, and they you know, they were city-building machines. Uh, speaking of them, 
they, they managed to survive yet another plague. Uh, very lucky. Uh, giraffe tried to put a plague on the in, in Honshu and drew a two. Japanese age is two, so it was okay. Most of the cards are higher than two in here, I think, so that was that was some good luck for Flush there. Uh, anything else happen? Uh, I think that was about it. And the turn is going to end, at least prior to scoring, with something a little bit more exciting, and that is the Spanish. Da -da -da -da. The Zimbabweans left us. The, the ploy, the trade ploy, alas, was not bearing enough fruit for Giraffe to keep them around. So she did Spanish, and she had the, the, the Phoenix card, which let, the, let her discard and then immediately set the Spanish. That is not good for Mr. Flush's Portuguese. The Spanish are right here in Castile, right next to Portugal. Large stack. Now, it may look like the Portuguese have a lot of defenders, but these are all submarines. They're not going to be able to be so useful. Um right there on land because they're submarines they belong in the water they belong under the water so pretty good move by giraffe she put herself in between the germans however and the portuguese which but then again now the germans are between uh the spanish and <laughs> the russians so there's this kind of layer going on here uh, which is fun the scoring is all tabulated, and Flush is still the top scorer of the three, um, which is not good for Giraffe. She really wants to take some bites out of him. Some bites were taken, though. He only scored the 10 this turn, which is less than before. Uh, you can expect that to go down even further next turn, as the Portuguese are probably going to get hit, just, just judging by the fact that there's these two big stacks right outside of their territory, and they are scoring a lot off of territory. Um, both uh, for having the most out of Europe and um, having a lot of Christian spaces. They're scoring less on that because the Mongolians are now Christian as well. Um, and you know what? If if gir Giraffe may decide to make the Russians Christian, that would that would uh, cut out on that score all altogether, I think, because I think the Russians have the capacity to spread out further than the Portuguese, especially since the Portuguese are going to have to be fighting for their lives. Um, so Flush is the high scorer, but he's weak in a lot of ways. I mean, he's, he has the Siamese and the Japanese, neither uh, both of which are kind of consistently giving him points, um, but neither of them are much of a player on the world stage. Uh, Runt scored decent. She's not scoring as much off the Egyptians as she was because the Portuguese have uh, more artifacts than them now. So she actually had to... She, they've been scoring six since time immemorial and now they're, they're scoring a bit less. Um, anything else? The Mongols for Giraffe are kind of an interesting case. They're definitely her strongest empire. Uh, but they are not scorers at all. I think she may probably want to keep them around, uh, especially if she makes it to the end, because they're going to be a tough, tough nut to crack with whoever would have to, who, whoever would want to um, face them. Not necessarily due to their current military might, but they have a lot of potential. They have the most cities, um, and that means they have a lot of money in their name, and they're close to wheat too, which is good. Though when we get up to age seven oil is going to become more important and then that could very much help the Germans. I mean the Germans, well, they don't have a huge access to oil but they have the North Sea and they're also going to have, they have all this wheat too. So if they, if um, Runt can get the Germans to have some more cities then they might be able to have as much of a, uh, as powerful an economy as the Mongolians. That could be an interesting uh, battle <coughs> with the, the Russians here in the middle. We'll have to see next time, well we won't see next time, but we'll see what happens perhaps especially with the Portuguese, next time on The Real People, Malta Game Solitaire Mega Tournament, 7x7 seven seven Ages.